everyone, as everyone's coming into our fun social media webinar, we're going to give everybody a chance to get logged in. Look at those numbers climbing, Rita. I've got 20 people. Today, we had over, I think we're close to 200 people registered for this. So I'm super excited. So I don't want to do our introductions yet. I'm going to let everybody get in. Um, we've been rushing around on the front end before you guys get in here to... Um, Get ready for all of these. I think this is going to be our highest number ever. So I'm super, super excited. Everyone's getting registered or getting into the uh, webinar right now. So yay, look at all this. We have, oh, look at, I've got lots of people I know on here. I'm so excited. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm sure people are going to join us late, but I'm Laura Hatch. I'm the founder of Front Office Rocks, and I'm so excited to be here with one of my super great friends. We've been talking about doing this for years now, um, Rita Zamora, um, and we are going to do a social media webinar. So before we get started and before we tell you kind of all the rules about what we're going to do, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about me and about Rita. So um, I, again, am the founder of Front Office Rocks. I'm a dental Front Office rock star. I was an office manager for over many, many years, and we do at Front Office Rocks online front office training. So I'm all about teaching your team the ins and outs of the front desk. And now we're about to launch Back Office Rocks. So we'll have a whole video campaign for Back Office. So that's who I am. Rita, welcome. Can you give them a little snippet about you? Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's my book. It's called Step Away from the Drill. And it's written to the dentist, uh, helping them to uh, understand the front office. And we are going to give away our books. I have one. Rita has one at the end of this webinar. So I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but this is Rita's awesome book that just came out recently, How to Get Found and Liked and Get Patient. So Rita, tell us a little bit about you. Hey, everybody. Um, yes, oh my gosh. I think the most important tidbit is people always ask why I ended up targeting death and like all of you spent 10 years um, I was with day. now have been speaking and helping practices with their social media needs myself and now my team uh, since 2008 so it's been over 10 years we're still around social media is still around and it's become more important than ever so I'm super psyched to be here and this is going to be a fun um, power session. I'm even at my standing desk, so I got room to move and stay motivated. <laughs> we're ready. Exactly. So to let everybody know what we're doing, we thought we wanted to do something a little different, not your typical stand behind a PowerPoint, listen to a voice, but really kind of wing it, make it fast, make it fun. Um, Rita and I, when we get together, we're always like, hey, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you tried that? I mean, I built my business 100% on social media. So I know some tips and tricks from running an office and from my business. And Rita, of course, is our go-to expert all the time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do 32 tips in 32 minutes. So Rita has 16 tips to share oh. with you on social media, and I have 16 tips. And we are going to hold ourselves accountable. So what we're going to do is we actually have time stop watches here on our phones. And when Rita starts, I'm going to start her clock. And when she gets close to the end of a minute, I'm going to tell her you got 10 seconds left to finish it up. And we're going to go back and forth. And we want to see if we can knock it out in 32 minutes. That being said, we are available for questions. And we're going to be available at the end of this for questions. So on the right-hand side of the Zoom, you should find an area where you can chat please feel free to ask questions along the way. We won't address them during this because we have a timeline. We have to get through 32 tips, but we'll address them at the end. Couple other things. If you're watching this live or if you've registered for this, we are going to send you this recording at the end via email. We're also going to send you a really cool infographic that we've made for this, a thing that you can post in your office. So you will get that automatically if you're here and registered with us. If you're watching this later on YouTube, because we are going to share this on YouTube, just follow the directions below. We'll give you links to our books. We'll give you links to the infographics so that you can print it out at home and contact information to reach us. So if you're not watching this live or you missed it because, you know, something happened at the office, don't worry. We're here for you. However, if you are here 
live, we also are going to give away two copies of our books. So both of our books, two people who stay with us all the way to the end, Jessica from my team is watching and monitoring, and you will get these uh, copy of each of these books. So what we'll do at the end, whoever's left, we'll randomly pull two people. You'll get an email that says you want a book, and we'll mail those books to you. If you weren't the winner, of course, we'll send you a link, and you're welcome to buy one of our books. So um, on that... Did I cover? I think I did all my homework. So we've got lots of people here ready to go. Are you ready for this, Rita? Yes, the pressure. Oh my gosh, I hope I remember the timer. I know. Well, we'll remind each other. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start the timer and you've got one minute to give us your first tip. Okay. Um, the tip number one is be original, be you. So let's avoid posting content on social media that says, you know, fun floss facts or how much saliva you have in your mouth or how hard your tooth enamel is and really focus on quality versus quantity. So you all have something special to offer. Think about philanthropic topics that you're passionate about. If you guys love animals, maybe share a dog or pet a cat that's up for adoption on your social media, or if you love lattes, think about, um, you know, featuring your favorite latte and tagging the local coffee shop. Or if you guys are passionate about whole body health, think about um, sharing content that's tying in with um, dentistry and whole body health. The point being that you need to share your values, your personality, whether it's technology, whether it's education or fun and whimsy, you all are awesome and you've got some great stuff to share. So start putting it out there so you can attract your ideal patients. Look at that, a minute down. Okay, your turn to, oh no, my little timer goes off. All right, you ready for me? Yep. All right, mine goes along with Rita, and mine is be real, don't just follow what everybody else is doing. So I think there's this idea, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, it was always the picture of the dentist and all the team were wearing matching clothes and we all stand on an angle around the dentist and we have a certain persona about us. Patients wanna know the real you and you should be the real you when you're out there. Don't just follow what everybody else is doing. If you have a fun team, show your fun team off. If you like to do crazy stuff, if you have fun things in the office, I think so many times we go on social media and we ask for advice from other dentists and other team members. And what happens is they're, you're just duplicating what they're doing. You're just following what the guy down the street's doing. And patients are not gonna remember you if you're just like the guy down the street. So you want to be real, show the real, you know, if your dentist really likes certain things like planes or cars, show that because that's what patients relate to us on is, is how real we are and not just about the dentistry and the teeth. Two, we did it. All right, you're up. You've got the next one, number three. Tip number two is hire a photographer to come to your practice and take photos in batches. So um, it doesn't have to be a professional photographer. It could be someone in your practice who just really loves to take photos. And this is what a lot of the Instagram influencers do. So we wonder, like, how do these people have time to take pictures all the time and travel all over the world? Do they not work? Um, so you can have someone come to your practice and take more candid looking photos. Um, think about this ahead of time. What is it that you want to promote in your practice? Are there certain amenities that you offer you want people to see? Or maybe this is the opportunity to take a picture next to your CEREC technology or some other, uh, maybe it's a dental implant model or something like that, that you want to use these pictures for then in the future. Do it on days where you're having your good hair day or whatever and um, get it all done at once. And then you'll have these pictures that you can use throughout the year for your social media to look awesome. Very good. All right, my tip number two is have somebody on your team who likes doing this be the person in charge of it. So I believe so many times that the dentist or the office manager or somebody is assigned this and it feels like it's just another thing we have to do. And when you put out on social media, it's just another thing we have to do. It comes off that way. You have people on your team who live on social media. You have dental assistants, hygienists, you have the receptionist, front office people who, they know the ins and outs of what people follow on social media. They look for ways to take pictures. And I learned this lesson. I was running a team meeting with my team and we were doing some fun events. And I look over and all my team's doing selfies and they're doing <laughs> pictures together and I thought, but, you know, I'm trying to do the candid here. We're having a team meeting picture and they're getting better photos because they think that way. So find somebody on your team or a couple people on your team and put them in charge of social media because there's going to be more fun around it and they're going to do a better job at it. Ooh, you rock. Yeah, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so next tip is to plan a monthly strategy. And this is so important because there's no way for you to really be strategic if you're not planning ahead. And so one of the things I hear a lot of times is, you know, we're not sure our social media is really even working, but when we look at the social media, there's not really anything posted that has to do with actually growing your practice, growing the type of dentistry you want to do more of. So start thinking ahead about what you want to post. For example, we're recording this in February. Next month is National Dental Assistance Recognition Week and also National Dentist Day. And those days will come and go unless you're planning right now for those particular topics. So start thinking ahead about what you want to plan, be more strategic, be more effective, and be more efficient, save time. There we go, speaking of saving time, you did it in under a minute. <laughs> okay, so mine, you got my timer going? Yep. Mine is branding, and it's about branding across all social media platforms and just branding in general. Um, you should have the same look and feel for every platform you're on, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook or whatever you do. When people see you, the idea is they see you repetitively. And if you don't have the same look and feel, if your logos don't match, your colors don't match, the type of things you put on on social media, they're not going to remember that they saw you on Facebook, that they saw you in a social media, whatever, you know, a video. So make sure you're thinking about branding. Everything should have the same look and feel about it. It. Everything should have your logo on it because we want, it takes people three to five times to respond to something. And the whole idea of social media is to get new patients and to grow our practices. But if they don't realize that you were the dentist they saw on Facebook and now they're seeing an Instagram, they're not seeing the tie together. So make sure that you're branding yourself so it's the same across all platforms. Good job. Okay, so um, my tip is post about the dentistry that you want more of. Kind of ties in with your monthly strategy, but so many times dentists are like, my social media is not working. The only thing that we're posting about is birthdays. And on the other hand, we have office managers saying, I don't even know what to be posting about. We're running out of ideas. So um, usually when I ask a dentist, what treatments do you want to be doing more of? It's going to be really quick. He's going to be like dental implants, Invisalign, cosmetic makeover, sleep apnea. Um, so you're not going to get 10,000 likes for your post about dental implants. Some patients may not even want their friends to know that they need a dental implant, but you've got to post about this type of dentistry because people are scrolling through your Facebook and Instagram, and they need to see the type of dentistry that you want to be doing more of when they're scrolling through your channel. So make sure that you're posting about the dentistry that you want to be doing more of. There we go. Down to the last second. I got gotcha. you. All right, so mine is find ways to get patients to post about you, not just you posting. So an interesting fact I learned recently is, I don't know if you remember, there was those um, unicorn things at Starbucks, those fancy drinks, and it was out for like, I don't know, a week, and everyone was posting about it. Everybody was putting pictures and taking it to their teams all across social media. Starbucks did not advertise that thing once. They never said, hey, look at our new star, you know, unicorn drink. It was all done through, so through the, you know, the customers posting it. So find ways to get your clients, your patients to be posting around about you. So things like Mother's Day, give them a rose with you're really important to us. You're a mom or Valentine's Day, give them a heart or a Valentine's and have them want to take a picture. Put something cool in the office. Like we had a full size Elvis in our office. We had people coming in all the time taking selfies with Elvis. So find ways to get your patients to talk about you, not just you, you know, marketing yourself. So hard because I want to talk with you. I know, right? Um, okay, so uh, my next tip is leverage um, technology so that you can be more efficient and more effective. And what I mean by that is when you're thinking about planning your strategy out, think about tools like Google Calendar. Some um, practices are using Google Calendar to plan out really not just for the month ahead, but the quarter ahead, the year ahead. What are different, um, not just holidays or special days, but different events you might have going on in the office. Maybe you have a coat drive or a food drive that you do, or you want to make sure that you celebrate you know, something in particular in your practice, your anniversary or what have you. So um, look at the different technologies that are available. Facebook also has a free scheduling tool available that you can use to pre-schedule your content. So you could plan it ahead in the Facebook scheduling tool. There's also Hootsuite. There's um, Sprout Social. There's 
oh my gosh, all these other resources. So make sure that you're checking out these platforms where you can pre-schedule your content and it'll get posted to Facebook, to Instagram, to LinkedIn, Twitter, and so forth. Okay, my turn. Um, my next tip is to get patients to check in. And I never realized how important this in, is to have people check in when they're in your office because I thought, so who, wh who cares? Who, you know, why would we want them to check in? But think about this. If I'm checking in at a business, everyone who's my friend who follows me on social media is seeing that I'm checking in on that business. And in a way now, it's like I'm putting out to the world, hey, I recommend this person. And maybe I don't write a testimonial. Maybe I don't post a picture of myself there. But I'm advertising to my group of friends who are usually similar demographics to me, similar lifestyle to me, that I acknowledge this business, that I'm there. So play a check-in game. Have like a little treat. They get a pen. They get a free chapstick. But have them check in when they're in the office because what that does is it really puts it out to their network of people to say, I recommend, I come to this office and it's a good office and maybe they'll reach out to them and say, hey, would you recommend them? But make sure you're having your patients check in. Awesome. So uh, the next tip is boost your posts consistently. And um, oh my gosh, I can't emphasize this strongly enough. It is a pay to play platform out there, people. So you should be boosting your posts on Facebook at least three times a month. Um, vary the type of posts that you're boosting and vary the time frames that you're boosting them. The good news is you'll get an extra bang for your buck if you're on Instagram. Oftentimes your Facebook boosts are also going to get populated on Instagram. And um, so many practices are not taking advantage of this. There's all sorts of tools and resources I can provide to you. Um, and, you know, they're, they're out there available also to Google them. But um, $5 a day will help you on average to reach about 1,000 people in most markets. So make sure that you're boosting. If you don't know how, get some help. If you haven't been successful or feel like it hasn't worked for you, try, try again. Okay, so my next tip, and this is in general, not just social media, but for social media, is play different games with your team, with your patients. If you say, okay, we want all the patients to check in, or we want everybody to do a social media post, or we want, it gets boring. I mean, throughout the days, we have to talk about oral health care. We have to talk about patients' insurance. We have to talk about their home care. We have to talk about the perio. We have to talk about, and so to add something like, and get everybody to check in forever, it doesn't make it fun. So find ways to play games with your team, maybe a competition between the hygiene team and the assistant team or the front and the back, or maybe every time somebody checks in, the doctor, I don't know, buys everybody Starbucks or just little things. It doesn't have to be huge, but if it becomes rote, if it becomes same month after same month, people aren't going to have fun with it. So find different creative ways to make it fun for your team. And when it's fun for your team, it's going to come off as being positive and fun for your patients, and they're more likely to do it. Woo. Okay. My next tip is be on Instagram. Instagram people. I know a lot of us are using Instagram personally, but when I pull people in my audiences for my seminars, there's a very small percentage of practices that are actually using Instagram. And on the other hand, we've got um, a percentage of practices that are blowing it out of the water on Instagram and they're paying more attention to their Instagram than their Facebook. So it really depends on where your patient, your ideal patient is spending their time. But Instagram was the fastest growing social media platform in 2018. I think we're taking that trend into 2019. If you're rolling your eyes right now, like, oh my God, I can't take one more social media platform, at least make sure that you set up your place, put your website information and a couple of photos there. Um, but we'll have lots more great Instagram tips for you. And the biggest one is be on Instagram and leverage that tool. It is hot, hot, hot right now. I feel like we're like doing one of those shows about outfits and stuff. <laughs> okay, stay focused, stay focused. All right, my next tip is go live. So going live, and I know I actually had the opportunity on here to go live on YouTube, to go live on Facebook, to go live. So going live is the next big, well, it's been big, but it's the next big thing. And it's something you can totally do with your practice. Now, I'm not recommending you go live when the patients are there. We have HIP and all that. But if your team is doing a fundraising walk, if you're having an event on the weekend for kids, if you're doing something, if your dentist is giving back, if you're doing something where 
people really want to see it. They want to see the, you know, the, the heart behind your practice, go live, share it with patients, share it with everybody. Cause that's going to, that's going to bring them into your practice. It's going to make them feel like they're there with you. So don't be afraid. The thing about live is you got to be real. Not everything goes perfect. Kind of like this. You got to work with technology, but people understand your patients are real and they're going to love it when they can see you guys in a live environment and not just in the stock, you know, pretty photos. Yeah, good job. So um, along those lines of video, my tip is to make sure that you use captions with your video. Um, this is so important. Uh, the statistic says um, right now about 85% of people on Facebook watch video on the silent mode. So no audio. It's also going to avoid that situation where someone's, you know, scrolling through and they realize they have their audio up and ah, you blast them. So um, you're going to engage so many more people if you use the caption tool available to you on Facebook. It's totally free. It's really easy to use. What's going to happen is when you load your video or when you do a Facebook Live, you can go into your settings and find this free caption tool that's available through Facebook. It's going to automatically pre-populate all of your captions in there. You're going to have to go in and do some editing, but it's easy peasy. It might take you 15, 20 minutes the first time. The next time it's going to take you three minutes. Um, but you want to use the captions and keep me posted on how this works for you because you're going to blow people out of the water with how many awesome videos you're going to have out there um, that they've been missing before because you haven't had captions. Very good. All right. Continuing on video. This is kind of our little video couple tips in a row. Get on YouTube. YouTube is one of the number one searched engines out there for, I mean, think about it. When I'm trying to figure out how to open Zoom before this call, I go on YouTube and I watch a video. We all go to YouTube. Oh, I'm counting myself down. We all go to YouTube to learn. That's the way we learn now. And so you want to be on YouTube and it can be fun videos. It could be educational videos. There's a dentist that I know in Michigan and I can't remember the name of it right now, but they do like every Tuesday, it's like Tuesday tips and it's how to brush your teeth and home care and but that's getting searched and they're getting press out there. And I think YouTube is a really forgotten area for dental offices. So make sure it's not just a commercial for your practice, but it's actually educational, maybe fun, but video is definitely the way to do it. And YouTube is a really big platform to share your videos on. I did that one fast. You didn't even hey, give me the timer. Look time in the bank. Woo! <laughs> Get a minute to breathe. All right, you're up. <sighs> Okay, my next tip is hashtags and geotags. Um, I often get asked during my seminars, people are like, what is a hashtag? If you don't know what a hashtag is yet, you need to get on Instagram or even just Google a hashtag, which is the pound sign, whatever the word is. But if you're using Instagram in particular, you wanna make sure that you're using your location, 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 hashtags, and also your geotags. So you don't have to do it for every single post, but quite frequently make sure that you're using a hashtag for your town or city um, or your geotagging, making sure that you're tagging your practice location or the city or town that you're located in. And also keep in mind for locations, do your homework. For example, here in Denver, we have hashtag Denver, but there's also nicknames and variances on those locations. We have hashtag Mile High City. We have hashtag Downtown Denver. We have hashtag Hashtag Lodo Denver. We have hashtag ICU timer, but um, get on there and do your research. You can even follow hashtags on Instagram now. So watch for your hashtags. We just started a new one. Hashtag ICU timer. Hashtag I'm over my timer. No, I'm just kidding. Exactly. All right. My next tip is to show what you do to give back. So we want our patients and, and the community to see that we're giving back, that we're doing things, that we're involved in the community, that we're not just there going home and, and closing up shop, but being part of the community. Now, I have two points to make on that. One is if you don't have stuff as a team to show that you give back, that you do something, then that's an issue in itself. So find a way, whether it's donations, whether it's collecting, we collect toys that go to cancer for parents that are in can um, or fighting cancer over the holidays. We're a collection point. That's a giving back. So make sure that you're doing things in your office. Secondly, individually, your team members are doing things. You have people on your team who do stuff on the weekends and the evenings. Spotlight that, highlight that, show how your team is involved in the community and the things that your teams do, because it really puts a true story to each one of your team members, which is positive for them. And then it's also positive for your practice. Ooh, dang, she's good. 
Maybe we shouldn't have done 32. That's a lot of teeth and tips, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm pretty excited about the next tip. So I don't think many people are really paying attention to this is um, thinking about um, using um, influencers to work with you on Instagram. And what this means is I think a lot of people think of a, an influencer as like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to try and approach the Kardashians or some big, you know, NFL star. And the truth of the matter is that you have influencers in your practice already. It might be um, if you're, you know, trying to attract more college students for Invisalign or for you know, teeth whitening or something, maybe you have an influencer in your practice that has 500 students in the community that are following them and that really admire them. Or it could be a local realtor, it could be a local musician, an author, a local business owner. Um, so there are all sorts of influencers in your community um, that you could just open up that conversation and say, hey, by the way, are you active on Instagram? Do a little bit of homework and then start that conversation and say, would you be interested in working with us um, to help us promote our practice? Good job. Okay. So my next one is having a contest within the team. And I know I've already talked about playing games, but I want to specifically talk about your team. The majority of our dental teams, we have a younger generation. We have people who are on social media all the time. So find a way to have a contest here and there with your team. For example, what we did is we did a costume contest and everybody came in costume and we took pictures and then we put it out there. And the contest was whoever gets the most likes or whoever gets the most votes. What that does is it gets your team to share their posts. It gets your team to put things out there that, about your practice. We did one where we decorated mugs, coffee mugs. It was a team building event. Then we put the pictures on social media and they shared it because they wanted to win the prize. So find ways from your team within your team to make it fun for them so that they'll go out and continue to share, to continue to help, you know, show others how amazing of a practice that they work at and get more likes for your practice. Woo! Awesome. Okay, my next tip is to use Instagram stories. So um, we have Facebook story opportunities as well. So you could use Facebook stories or Instagram stories, but Instagram stories um, are not being widely utilized yet. Um, they are in certain pockets, but I think by dental practices, highly underutilized. So your practice can really stand out by creating an Instagram story, which is going to be featured at the top of the Instagram feed. And if you're not sure what an Instagram story is, hop on Instagram and check out the top of the feed. You can click on these little, um, they almost look like short videos or animations, or sometimes they're still photos. But I encourage you to really be creative with what you're posting on there. So you don't want to have the same still photo on your Facebook page and everything else on your Instagram story. Take advantage of that opportunity and those eyeballs by showcasing something really cool and fun about your practice. It might be a boomerang video or add some fun stickers or gifts to your posts. It's a place to be playful and have a little bit of fun in alignment with your brand, of course, but get on Instagram stories. All right. My next tip is to highlight an employee of the month. And this is a great way to not only empower your employees to feel like they're important, your team members, to realize and recognize how important they are to you and your practice, but your um, patients love to see that. Your patients, you know, spend more time with the, with the team members than they do with the dentist. So highlight and spotlight somebody of the month. Now, don't just talk about, I've been a dental assistant for five years and I really love to work at this practice because they're amazing. Talk about things they like to do extracurricular. They have two kids. They love, they, they coach soccer. They love music. The first concert they ever went to. That's the kind of things we want our patients to connect to us and share our, our practices because of the heart that they feel, because the connection they have with the employees. So share some fun things with your, with your followings. You know, go out there and talk about your employees and spotlight each one once a month. That's a great social, easy social media post that you can do once a month on all your platforms. Nice. My next tip is doing virtual door knocking and handshaking, and you can do this on Facebook um, or on Instagram. It's especially a great opportunity right now on Instagram. Many of you that are on Instagram probably already see a lot of people um, on there. They'll follow you and then like three of your posts, and you might check out their profile and see if you're interested in following them back. But um, you all, as a practice, can look for people in your community that you can start to follow, that you can like their posts. 
um, when it's natural and organic, of course, and um, you can start sharing their content, but think about local businesses or local nonprofits that you follow or you enjoy. Um, just like Laura mentioned earlier, if you don't have any connections in the community, that's not a good thing. That's a huge opportunity for you to start looking at what's your favorite coffee shop, your favorite restaurant, your favorite nonprofit, and go out and find some people to network with on Instagram. And that's funny because my next tip is spotlight other local businesses. And when Rita and I shared these, I didn't know what a virtual door knocking was. So <laughs> we always try to, in our practice, you know, we would give gift cards out for like the local restaurants as a thank you for something or whatever. So we spotlight the local businesses. So, you know, if you do that for them, you know, I pat your back, there's a good chance they're going to pat you back, vice versa. So find other businesses that are active on social media that are good at this. If you've got patients in the practice that have local businesses, small businesses that they're trying to grow, maybe they're involved in networking groups, maybe they're involved in, you know, local, you know, churches or community groups, find out who's in your practice and then get connected and spotlight them and the great things that they're doing. You know, it shouldn't always be about you and your team. It should be about how you're involved in the community and how you, you know, you hold other businesses up and they're going to do the same for you. So to go find businesses and really, you know, reciprocate with them and, and spotlight them like Rita just said. Love it. One of my favorite ones because we're relationship folks. So, right. um, okay. So uh, my next tip is to customize your Facebook messenger. Um, more and more patients are starting to send messages and ask questions of practices through Facebook. Um, and I think they will through Instagram direct messages as well. And so there's tons of opportunities with the Facebook Messenger to be able to set up automated messages, messages for patients when they ask a question. So if you're not available, it would automatically respond to them and say, you know, we'll be back in the office at X time or whatever. As these tools get more sophisticated and we get some more, um, you know, artificial intelligence involved with these tools, there's going to be tons of opportunities. But for now, what you can do is go into your Facebook business page settings and customize the messaging. And what's really interesting is we're seeing patients that are messaging the practice at like 6 a.m. or at 11 p.m. or on Saturday or Sunday. So your patients want to talk with you when you are not available. And Facebook Messenger is a great opportunity for you to be able to get um, those messages. <laughs> <laughs> The pressure of the two seconds. Ah. Okay. Mine is um, learn the best times to post. And, you know, dental posts, it, one of the things that kills me is when I go on Facebook and, you know, in the morning and all of the practices in the area all posted, like you said, you know, cavities cause whatever. And it's Monday morning at 10 o'clock, you know, decay or whatever. And it's like the same post and everybody's seeing it. Learn when you're getting responses to your posts, especially if you have somebody responsible for social media. You can see that maybe Tuesdays are a better day or maybe Fridays are a better day or maybe in the afternoons your patients are more likely to be on Facebook so or on social media. So start to learn when you get the best responses. Fridays are a fun day, so that might be a, a fun thing going on in the practice. Maybe Mondays and Tuesdays are the days that you do education. You know, maybe Wednesdays is a good day you talk about different kinds of procedures you want to do. But really start to pay attention to when you're getting the responses, when people are reacting, when people are liking, and then post at the appropriate times. Sorry, that was totally my bad. I know, right? I got a two-second warning. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. So my next tip is to plan quarterly patient appreciation giveaways. Um, so many practices do um, fun patient appreciation things in their practice, but more and more practices are starting to create and craft giveaways and patient appreciation activities just to generate goodwill in the community for every quarter. So they have something to share about on social media and generate some goodwill and word of mouth. So start planning ahead and thinking about what it is that you want to do a patient appreciation giveaway for. Um, you know, spring is coming up. Maybe you're going to do a spring basket giveaway, or you might do something special for Mother's Day or Father's Day or what have you. But start thinking ahead um, for those four quarters of the year and what type of activities are you going to be doing so that you have a special um, activity that you can share and make sure you boost it. Um, and share the word of mouth about it within your practice as well and just have some great fun. Good one. I love that one. Thank you. 
All right. My next one is to share fun stuff about your doctors. Um, just like I said, we want to emphasize or show how our patient, I mean, our team does stuff out of the practice and, and, and how we give back to the community. Many times our, our patients feel our doctors are very, they're the doctor and they're in the white jacket and we have an image that we need to keep up. But our doctors are people too, in case you didn't know that. And our patients love to know that our doctors are people too. So if you've got interesting fun facts about your doctor, or if maybe there's something quirky about your doctor or cute about your doctor, they wear funny socks every day, or you know they were a hippie back in the day, or they went to some concert, Woodstock, whatever, that's the kind of stuff that patients really like to read. And, and so many times we just put all this education out, education, education. And, and what, what's going to happen is the patients are going to unfollow you. They're not going to, they're not going to be interested anymore. So make sure you put in interesting things about your doctor. Patients are really going to love it. And they're going to come in talking to your doctor about it, which will be fun. Woo. Okay. Let's see my We're next. In the end. We're getting yeah, it. I know. My next tip is to post content on your Google My Business profile. Um, it's not a social media platform, but I think your Google My Business profile is one of your most important pieces of online real estate. And a lot of practices are not aware that you can post content there. So your Google My Business profile is where your map and your reviews live, and Google allows you to post content there. That content after seven days is archived. So you want to make sure you're posting there at least every week. And um, you can post different content than what you're sharing on your other social media. Remember, Google likes original content of all kinds. So make sure you're taking advantage of that awesome free real estate that Google is giving you. Most other practices are not aware and aren't taking advantage of that. So you can post things like we're welcoming new patients. You can put any patient specials on there. You can put some human type posts, fun things like Laura said about the cool socks your dentist is wearing or, you know, whatever it is that you all are passionate about in your practice. Practice, but take advantage of that. Good. All right. My next one is what's the point of putting out social media po po posts if it's not generating new patients? So I also think that you need to make sure you're balancing asking for reviews. And I know this isn't a social media necessary, you know, necessary tip, but necessarily. But we do want to make sure that the reviews are across all platforms, anywhere you can put a review. So if I'm putting stuff on Facebook and let's say my friends are all liking it and stuff and they actually go check out the dentist, I want to make sure there's reviews there. I want to make sure because the next step for a consumer is I'm hearing a lot about this office. Now let me go see what people are saying about him. And if you're having fun and you're getting followings, that's great. But the ultimate goal is to get new patients. So, and to stay connected with your current patients. So make sure that you're getting reviews across all platforms because when they're out searching you, when they're ready to potentially pick up the phone and call you, you wanna make sure that they see reviews about you and that you're giving them how great you are. You're giving right, me- That's another timer. <laughs> I'm like, I could talk 10 minutes on this one. Okay. All right. um, my last tip um, is ask your team to like, follow, and share. And that may be a like, well, duh, but there's, you know, two categories of practices that are either they're, the team is not involved in social media at all for whatever reason. And then there's another school that are like, oh, we already like the page and things like that. But if you're not thinking about it on a consistent basis, you're not actively inviting your local network to like your Facebook page or follow you on Instagram or tagging yourself in photos if you're comfortable with that or sharing your practice content um, on occasion. So um, we live in an Instagram world now. Now. If we don't have pictures and activity on our social media, it's almost as if our businesses don't exist. So if you want to have a thriving practice, if you want to have job security, a successful, fun place to work in the future, I hope that you'll think about how you can support your doctor, um, your dentist, your specialist on social media by helping to promote your practice on social media and get out there and have some fun with it. All right. And my last tip, like we've, I thought this was going to be than, or easier than this. This is actually pretty hard keeping it to a minute. My last tip is be amazing or none of this is going to work. So you could do social media all day long. You could put posts out all day long. You can get reviews. But if you're not amazing, people aren't going to talk about you. People aren't going to go out of their way to like your page. They're not going to share. They're not going to check in. I say practices have three things. You can either be amazing, awful, or average. If you're awful, they're going to talk about you. They're probably not going to follow you on social media, but they're going to go out and put bad reviews. If you're 
average, they're not going to go out of their way to share things on social media. It's just going to be something else on their feed. But if you're amazing, your patients are going to be involved. It's going to be, be more fun. So don't go advertise and don't go spending all this time on social media if you're not amazing in-house. Become amazing within your four walls. Become an amazing, awesome team that people want to share. Then go out and do all these tips that Rita and I've given you because that's going to be, be much more effective when you're an amazing team. We did it. Oh, 32. Oh my gosh, we're getting lots oh, of good not stopping. People, <laughs> like, I hope people like it quick and fast. There we go, right? So, yes. And I agree. This was fun because I had so many things I wanted to interject when you were talking, and I had to be quiet. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. And we should let people know I'm so excited about the handout, the special handout that we have only for them that are on this meeting live because it's going to be really cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, will, we will send it to you, and there'll be links. If you miss this, I know people are asking, um, you know, this will be recorded later. You can watch this if you watched it, but you want your team to watch it because we gave a lot of team ad advice. If you want your doctor to watch it because you've been trying to talk your doctor into doing more social media and how to do it, you know, this will be recorded for you. Um, if you have questions for us, I'm looking over on the right. I'm getting some questions. Let's see. So post your questions. We're gonna go until we run out of questions. We didn't wanna keep you guys for too long. If you stay on with us till the end, then you'll get in the drawing to get our two books. We have Step Away From The Drill, Get Found, Get Liked, and Get Patience. And so my, my book is focused on being amazing and Rita's book is about being amazing online. So the two combinations will really help you implement this within your practice. So let's see, questions and answers. Have you found, and this Rita, you're more about this than me. So. Have you found any trends as to when's the best time in times and days to post? Well, I mean, I think in general, um, one of the days that we found is really the least performing um, day for us is typically Friday after lunch um, because people are on weekend mode and they're like, whatever. So I think that's, you know, one of the worst days. And then generally thinking about when you're using social media, so either early in the morning, like that's the first thing that we're seeing when we wake up is our phone, looking through our feed at lunchtime or in the evenings. And then um, remember the weekends as well when patients have time to be on social media. So don't forget about exploring and then um, explore these different times and then check your insights to see what's resonating with people. You can see, you know, when people are actually uh, active and responding. Right. And one of the things I wanted to mention, you mentioned this and I couldn't jump in, is the boost. You were saying boost a post. Can you talk a little bit about waiting until there's comments on there before you boost? Because you've taught me that. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so important for every business. Um, always, uh, you know, if you're boosting a post, always target your um, or release it to your existing page likes first. So you can get some comments and some love. And then when you've got all kinds of social proof, then you can extend your boost to friends of people that are already connected to your page. And that way they're gonna go, oh my gosh, Laura Hatch loves this business. They, they must be awesome. Let me check them out. And you'll get some more social proof in that way. And then you wanna make sure that you have that before you get out into the, the next ring out of that it is uh, people that aren't connected to your practice at all. And they'll see all kinds of awesome social proof there. And so you're not going out and just doing cold calling that way. And I think that's great. That was a big change. Actually, I use it for front office rock. So if I know I've got a good boot or a good thing, I'll wait for people to make comments, then I'll boost it. Because then, like you said, people will see people and say, oh my gosh, I know them and, and I want to follow that. So yes. um, how do you connect your Facebook business page with your Instagram business page? Oh, it's actually easy peasy. Um, so on your app, in your Instagram app, you can go into your settings and then there'll be an option that I believe it'll say account and you might have to click on account and then it should say business account. Um, so then once you click on that, because Facebook owns Instagram, they're going to recognize if you're an administrator on your Facebook business page, um, they'll recognize that you have that connection to your Facebook business page and you can just, it'll automatically populate um, your next option to click on your Facebook business page, and then that's going to automatically connect your Facebook with Instagram. It's actually quite easy. Perfect. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the patient appreciation, like when you're for patients and spring baskets and Mother's Day or whatever? Can you talk a little bit more about how you recommend that goes? 
Yeah. Do you want to share some tips, Laura, about that from inside the practice? Well, so what I do, I mean, whenever we do anything, we try to get some, um, generate some activity around it, some energy around it. So we'll usually post something in the beginning of an event, like, hey, we have this coming up. You got to make sure you get involved. Or, and then videos along the way. Um, it's any time that you can show that your practice is doing something outside of the box. I think patients like to see that. I am going to say, be super careful um, that you don't say, and I always cringe when I watch dental offices say, we're going to pull a name out of a hat. Remember privacy. So, you know, Rita will be in touch with you, but don't say Rita who. Don't say, but, you, you know, make sure that, but it's exciting. The other thing is, my two cents. I watch these videos and it's like, we're pulling a name out of a hat. Like get the best person who can be on camera or get a group of people, right? Because it should be exciting. It should be interesting. So, but Reed and I can send more information for anyone who wants to know about that. Um, how do you feel about developing Snapchat filters for the practice? Good idea or bad? Mm -hmm. I think if your patients are active on Snapchat, um, if you're an ortho practice, you're probably already involved with this. For mainstream practices, if you don't have a lot of patients that are active on Snapchat, then one of the trends that we're seeing is that Instagram is stealing a lot of Snapchat's thunder because they're replicating a lot of their features like stories and things like that. So, um, you know, time will tell, but Snapchat's not doing incredibly well when you look at the numbers. So that could change in a few years um, as those Snapchat users mature, we'll have to see. But um, for now, unless you have some unicorn patient base that's really active on Snapchat, I would say your big focus should be on Facebook and Instagram. There you go. Now, somebody asked if we don't want to do social media in-house, can you recommend any companies that do a good job at it? Rita, do you know any companies that help with social media? My goodness. Well, you know what? We're really blessed um, in our field because we actually have several really good reputable companies that have been around for quite a while. Um, of course, we do offer custom social media services for our clients, and we have a brand new product that's coming out that's invitation only for do it with us social media. So we have like the do it for you and the do it with you. Um, so we can talk about that later, but there are also um, great companies out there. My social practice um, has been around for a long time and they're good guys. And, um, you know, I'm sure there are other companies too. There's lots of boutique agencies out there. So you've got a lot of great mentors and other groups um, available to help you. One of the things I'm going to mention though, because we worked with companies in the past too, is you still need somebody in-house to manage it because otherwise, like I said earlier, it just becomes like cookie cutter with everybody else in your area. So somebody in-house, the thing I like my social practice too, where you can pick things that you want. They give you content, they help you, but you still decide what you want for your practice. So um, there's definitely a lot of resources out there. Um, for anybody who's listening who's an office manager, if you haven't heard of, get involved with ADOM. It's American Association of Dental Office Managers or Management. And they always work with a lot of the companies who help us in the front office for things like this. And there's a lot of companies through ADOM. So um, there's companies out there who can definitely help. Yeah, I do want to just add, Laura, that was so important what you had said, because you, you have to have, even if someone's doing it for you, one of the things that we do is nudge our, our custom clients. We're like, we need photos, you know, National Dental Assistant Recognition Week's coming up, National Dentist Day is coming up, like send us some new photos. And when they don't give them to us, you know, it's really hard to personalize that content. So you really have to have someone in the, the practice that's at least willing to coordinate, might just take a few minutes of their time, a month even to get that coordinated, but that's so important. Funny story with the, the dental office that I ran, I just got their social media post about a month ago and it was, we're, I'm in San Diego. Our practice is in San Diego, California. It was, be careful out there. The roads are really crazy because the rest of the country, it's snowing and cold and this company didn't know, like really? So and so we had to get them to take it down right away because our patients are probably like, what are they talking about? So really working with your company to make sure they know you. Yes. Um, what would you say, Rita, is the right balance between educational and fun posts? Mm -hmm. And how often do you post? Because you don't want to drive your patients crazy. So what's your recommendations with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this the ratio that we've been recommending for years now is an 80-20 ratio of 80% social and 20% dental. Um, you can also think of it as more 80% not selling and 20% kind of selling. So as long as you keep that ratio in mind, you'll be fine. And social might still be revolved around dentistry. It might be maybe you're, um, you know, promoting 
uh, or maybe you have a cute picture of a patient and the doctor. You, of course, have signed release to be able to share that or what have you. So even though it's related to dentistry, it's more social in nature. So that 20% dental is going to be a post about dental implants or a post about your special for Invisalign or something along those lines. And then how often to post? Remember, it's all about quality, not quantity. And if you're boosting your posts on occasion, you might even only post a few times a month. But if you're boosting those posts and it's good content, you're going to get a ton of visibility and much better engagement and ultimately leads and new patients from those activities versus posting everyday generic content. So a general practice could post, you know, twice a week if you wanted to and, and you'd be fine. Okay, excellent. And then we mentioned ADOM and there's people on here saying, I love ADOM. Are you guys going to be there? I know front office rocks. We will be there. Are you going to be at ADOM this year? You know, I'm thinking about it, but I would appreciate it if y'all would suggest me to get back on ADOM as a speaker because I have not spoken there in years and I believe I am overdue. Well, let's make that a, let's make that a mission. I know my team will be about that because if you guys haven't seen Rita speak, you have to see her speak. She is the, my, one of my favorite speakers out there. She knows what she's talking about. We've had people on here. I'm going to stop the questions at this point. If we get more if you're, you know, we'll have our contact information. Rita and I are available to you. We're going to do the books. I want to say we had a, a, a aloha and mahalo from a, or a, a Hawaiian dental studio. So nice. thank you guys for more. Aloha. Aloha. Um, Rita, do you have anything else you want to tell us about before we get off this? Anything that people should know? Oh my gosh, reach out to me if you have any questions whatsoever. We do have a brand new service that we're launching. I'm super excited about it. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a do it with you service. Um, and it's by invitation only right now. So if you're interested in um, us having a conversation to see if you would qualify for the exclusive opportunity, reach out to me. Um, otherwise, it was awesome to spend time with you guys. And thanks for hanging out to the end. So Exactly. And I'm Laura with Front Office Rocks. If you want to learn more about us, there's information on the bottom. We do online front office training on everything front office. And I bring in experts like Rita. So Rita, that was fun. Thank you. So much. Thank you. It's good to see you. That's good to see you. And I'll see you, I'm sure, at the next conference. There's 57 people who are in the hat to win the two books. So keep an eye out and an email. I'm not going to pull the name now. We're going to pull it when we finish. You'll get an email in the next 20 minutes, and we will send our books to you. For everyone else, there'll be links of how to buy them. If you love this and want us to do it again, let us know. We can, we can do this again. This was a huge success for both of us. So yeah. thanks, Rita. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Okay, bye, everybody. Thanks.